Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. I know all of you, all of you, we're really looking forward to this one. And when I say all, it's the responses that my assistant, my team leaders, those here at Power 98.5, you are live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from here and all around the world. Yes, superstar, A-lister, Gucci Ford, John Varvatos, I mean, Sean Williams, he could be the new 007. So step to the side, Daniel Craig. We love you. You're a great actor, but can you imagine this tall, powerful, talented dancer, cast member from season one of HBO Max's F-Boy Island? He is a professional dancer with Chippendales, former with Cirque du Soleil artist. That's how prestigious Sean Williams is. I mean, to be with Cirque du Soleil, his reputation, his look, he's got photo shoots going on across the board. The videos are flawless. And you know what I like to do? This is what I want to do. We're going to go ahead, and I usually do this um, at times when I remember, uh, you know, to start the show out beforehand, but he did such an incredible introduction uh, when it comes to his show and to let everybody know, hey, tune in. So take a listen. Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here. I just wanted to let you know that I'll be going on live with Stephen Cuoco for Power 98.5 Satellite Radio on November 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, he's interviewed guests such as Dan Aykroyd, Brian Lochte, and a host of other A-list celebrities, and I feel extremely privileged to be interviewed by him. And so I hope you guys can tune in. Talk soon. One of the best videos ever made, and I'm appreciative of all of the talent that I have here live on air with Stephen Quilk on Power 98.5. But this one is a good one. Go to Power 98.5's Instagram page, Power 98.5 Radio. Give a like, share a comment, share it. I'm very happy. We already got over 1,900 views on that one. Appreciate the comments. So without further ado, my good friend, Cirque du Soleil, professional dancer, reality TV star, hopefully going to be the new 007 coming up in 2022, Mr. Sean Williams. Hey, what's up, Steven? <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> I wish I had my clap, my applause uh, sound effects, or I would have blasted that out before you came on. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one even better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited to do the pod with you. Oh, man. Thank you for being with us here. And uh, yeah, all the way from Vegas, one of my favorite cities in the world. So what's going on? What's happening out there? Um, the city's heartbeat heartbeat is back. Um, you know, with the, the shutdown of the world, um, Las Vegas was nothing was happening here for such a long time for about a year and a half and um in the past three to four months everything has just been slowly opening back up and vegas is back people are here people partying people are um going out to shows going to dinner going to bars you know this this place is back in business and i feel it's uh, busier than ever now i heard the mask mandate is still there are they requiring or at least is it on the strip? Do you need your vaccination card as well? 
Um, I haven't seen much about having a vaccination card, but I have seen everyone in all casino shows and bars having to wear a mask. And so the mask mandate is still effective here. And so when people come to the show, um, they're wearing masks. And that's that's still the, the change that um, that's still here um, from the year. And so everyone's in a mask. With you being a performer and getting around, does that apply as much to you? Because you can't be performing with a mask on. So I do and I don't. Um, when I'm on stage with the guys, we don't have to wear a mask. We're all vaccinated. Um, but when we go into the audience, um, when we're interacting with audience members, we have to put a mask on. So it's just like when we are running on stage and we have to do like a quick change with our clothes, we put a, put our different outfits on a shirt or different pair of pants or whatever we have to just include the mask now so it's easy as uh taking off a shirt or putting one on really that's not an imposition like you basically it's become a way of life yeah it it has and um i hate to say that i'm used to it now but i'm very used to it and uh, it doesn't feel like a burden anymore it's just uh, a part of what has to be done here since filming F Boy Island on HBO Max, how recent did you get back to Las Vegas? Uh, can you share with us your experience? What was life like, or was it really any different? You know, you were the same as where you are in Vegas. What you did with Cirque du Soleil, Chip and Dale's was the same. You know who you are and who you were, Sean Williams on the reality TV show. Um, a lot has changed uh, personally and professionally. Um, when in Grand Cayman, it was like pre-COVID. We, we didn't have to wear a mask. We got tested before we went. We got tested every three days when we were there. But everyone on the island, uh, there was no one on the island that had COVID since this whole thing started. And so it was like pre COVID-19 where we can all just interact and shake hands like it was normal. And so being there, that was nice. It was like a a bit liberating to be able to experience that again and take a break from having to wear masks and having to deal with some of the things that we dealt with here in the States. And so while there, that was a thing. And so um, filming was great. It was a new part of my entertainment experience. I've been in entertainment for uh, over 20 years now. And it's mainly been on the Vegas stage and uh, we did world, I did world tours with Chippendales. And so I was able to travel the world and do shows with uh, the company. We did like 20 to 25 different countries a year um, when tour was happening, when I went back in um, 07, 08 and 09. But <clears throat> yeah, the um, experience of traveling the world with Chippendales is, it's a great thing. But um yeah um what else has changed um yeah just i come back to to vegas with this new um experience in my backpack if you will and um yeah i just feel like it was a great thing like i had never thought that i would be doing a dating show i had often gotten uh direct messages on instagram to do a dating show and i just never took the opportunity to do it because i was living my dream i'm working for cirque du soleil um i just thought like uh, no, i don't want to do that and also i was in a relationship during that time so there was no dating shows uh for me to do during those t- or during the time that i was in a relationship and so um 2020 happened the world shut down i'm at home nothing to do all the shows are closed and i wasn't in a relationship i just uh ended a relationship during that time as well um and so i was a single man and i got a direct message and thought hey let me look into this and so as i dug more and more um it just started happening and before you know it i'm flying out to grand cayman to film a reality tv dating show and it was one of the best experiences of my life uh, one of the best experiences of my career and so um i glad i i'm glad i took the uh, opportunity to do it would you continue reality tv or do you feel set where you are like you had the experience it worked for you 
and now you're wanting to do something different or do you have the like you know what i i could do netflix next <laughs> yeah i feel exactly that i'm wanting to do more television i'm wanting to do more film because of the experience that i had um i want to do more reality tv i think that would be great um i am in a relationship right now so doing another dating tv show is um off the you know it's not in the plans anytime and so uh as far as any other type of television show goes i'm open for you know that experience as well and uh, i would love to see what i can do in that that realm in that arena i can picture you on survivor oh i would love to do survivor mm. that'd be amazing absolutely that'd seriously seriously you you you're all <clears throat> you're the bells and whistles of what that show i believe would be looking for i actually did hear something recently about uh, audition for Survivor. And so that's funny you bring that up. It must be in my vortex right now. This is what I'm going to do. So Survivor, I'm going to check my database here. Survivor. All right. So CBS. And uh, here we go. So you actually, the time to apply for Survivor 43 and future seasons is now. We are actively casting. So please apply today for your chance. So let me go ahead. I'm going to do us. Are you signing me up right now as we speak? I'm going in and I'm finding out what you can actually apply. Wow. So wow. what I'm going to, yeah, they're, they're looking for it. So here's the thing. Uh, make sure all your information is correct before moving on to the next step. Do not refresh your browser, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so they, um, uh, yeah, you've got to, yeah. I mean, what I can do is uh, when, we're done, when we're done with our live interview, I can uh, take this, uh, this link that I have and email it to you and you can finish the application. All right. Because normally casting directors want you as talent to fill this out, to put it in your own words. Uh, let's see, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and Let's see what happens if I do mine. Yes, I'm 16. Let's see what they ask. Cell phone required. First time I've ever done this while being live, but hey, I like new <laughs> things. Uh, state. I'm with it. Why not? So it's very serendipitous. And I'm not person. I pay attention to the signs. I want to see where things are going and what can happen here. So here's everything next. I have everything in order. All right, boom, take that out. Sometimes these things are very fickle. All right, let's see what they're asking. So I just put in preliminary uh, appearance, more about you, occupation, ba 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 TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, I could easily fill this out for you, but I, I just think it'd just be better for you to fill it out. It's very, you know, have the links to your Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is that you want them to go and most proud of. Um, that was in step two and then you got three and four to finalize it and that's it. But you know what? I'm going to, okay. I just made for shits and giggles. You know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send to you this, uh, information, um, view eligible requirements. Welcome applied. I'm going to apply as well. All right. I'm going to be gonna applying today as well. We're going on as a team, I, I, I think. We are. So I'm not kidding. I got it here. When we get done, st when we close out, stay on the phone. I'm going to copy and paste this, send it to you. Yes, they are looking for it, and why the fuck not? All right. I'm down with that. I'm being very serious, Sean. I'm applying uh, me today. Me too. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I was cast for 13 shows. I've been trying to get on Big Brother since 2010. I did. I submitted for Canada and uh -huh. I submitted the U.S. I want to get on that show. I love that show. I will have a field day. And I think Big Brother, even you would be perfect for Big Brother. Um, I got to check in and see if they're casting. If they are, I can send you that information as well. But this is great. All right. Today, awesome. Sean Williams and me and I 
are going to be casting for Survivor uh, and uh, whatever uh, on CBS and whatever else comes up. Amazing. Amazing. This, this is awesome. I love everything about this right now. So knowing that it's been brought to your attention, you've got your confirmation, how like God, the universe could not be knocking and trying to open up that door to say, here it is. I really see this, Sean, as a message, a clear, distinct message that you are to continue pursuing television. I can see you on days of our lives. I mean, you, you have the, you're at the perfect age, perfect experience. You are very clear in understanding who you are. You've got the expertise and experience behind you. You're sophisticated, like seriously. Um, if I'm going to tell you as a public relations rep, not that you are, but this is not the time for you to sit and wonder what could be, even though you're solid out there with Chippendales in Vegas, this is not the time to sit and be like, hmm, like you are literally at the perfect age, perfect place, and perfect time in your life to make yourself a multi-million dollar megastar. I'm all about it. And it's funny, it's interesting you say this because that's been on my mind heavy um, within the past year or so. I've had a lot of time to think about what direction I want my career to go. And I love Chippendales. They, they've been a part of my life for such a long time. And I actually grew up in that show. Like when I got here to Vegas when I was 19 years old, that was the first show that I was in. And from 19 to 29, I worked for Chippendales before my uh, six year hiatus of working for Cirque du Soleil. I worked with Chippendales. And so I love that company. They're an amazing family. They've been so good to me and they've taught me so much, but I'm not one to just um, sit around and wait. I'm always pursuing something and looking for um, more and seeing where my potential can take me. And whatever comes up within the realm of entertainment or the, the realm of my career, I'm going to look into it even more and figure out what what I can do and figure out where it takes me because I want to see what what more potential I have inside of me to do greater things. And so I'm never one to just not do anything. I, I always continue to push and pursue more. And so I hear what you're saying and I'm definitely going to continue to do that, to push and, and do more because TV is something that I've always wanted to do. And I've been, I've been getting tastes of it over the years uh, for many years, whether it's me going on uh, representing Chippendales or me going on certain TV shows representing Cirque du Soleil or more recently going on as myself for HBO Max's F Boy Island. Um, it's just been there in my, in my space. And so I've been putting a lot more focus into doing more in regard to television and days of our lives type soap opera. Yes, I'm for it. Survivor. Yes, I'm for it. A uh, big brother. Yes, I'm for it. Like, let's go. Um, it only adds to my resume for one, it adds to my happiness and overall wellness. Um, I love pushing. I love pushing myself to to be greater, whether it's in the gym or in my career, my relationship. I'm always going to be doing things to expand and, and be greater in those areas. So, For those that are tuning in, I want to thank you. We are live with performer, actor, and model Sean Williams. Uh, throughout his life, he was heavily influenced by his mother, Donna, who sang professionally as a gospel singer, which explains why Sean's gravitation to the entertainment industry was seemingly inevitable. During the span of his career, he's had a six-year stint of performing for Cirque du Soleil, graced the stage worldwide as a Chippendales dancer, and recently can be seen in the inaugural season of HBO Max's reality TV dating show, F Boy Island. He also recently modeled with Naomi Campbell in the latest campaign for Bottega Veneta, which was shot by world renowned photographer David LaChapelle. Now, doesn't that sound like a multi million dollar talent? 
that's where you say, Sean, yes, I am a multi-million dollar. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on the other audience to, <laughs> to answer that, but yes, a re- resounding yes. <laughs> I know you're so used to having an audience. It's like, you know, why, when do you need to speak unless you, until you were given a mic, right? <laughs> yeah. It was like, all right, <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> I am very impressed and proud of you and such, you're so young and just, you've you've got such fire and ambition and just oozing of talent and credibility like i'm once again i am still a a seasonal resident of las vegas i haven't been back due to the pandemic but i do plan to come back soon um because the city did change it didn't feel Mm -hmm. like vegas but I, I will say you are bigger than where you're at now. I don't even know if there is a city here in the United States that's big enough for you because you really are international. You're an international talent. I, you know, the UK, Germany, uh, you know, South America, like you could South America, like literally you can go anywhere. And I believe that you, you can be a success in any country. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, I would love to travel more for work. Um, it's been one of the main reasons I've traveled, which was for work. And I love getting to know other cultures and um, the, the environments of other countries. And there's just so much to this world that we live in. And I'm a sponge. I'm going to continue to soak it all up. And I would love to travel for work if it means going to Germany to do something or Brazil or, you know, any other parts of Europe or Australia, wherever in the world, like wherever the work takes me, I'm open to do that. I'm open for that, um, for that uh, in my life right now. What's the best place you've ever lived or been and felt you could really, really see yourself living here for the rest of your life. Have you met that place yet? Um, I've had a couple, I'd say a couple times in my life where I've felt that, but it wasn't certain. I I feel like a gypsy in a sense where I, but that doesn't stand true in my life right now because I've been in Vegas for over 17 years, but I I've seen places that I would love to live like Australia. Australia is amazingly beautiful. The people there were cool in Sydney specifically. Um, Australia is great. I've been to Hawaii, Maui. Maui is amazing. It's an absolute dream. I call that place the garden of Eden because it was just this pristine, beautiful place. Um, one place I haven't been, um, was any part of South America. That's one place I've been really wanting to travel and get to know. I haven't been to South America, but I've been to pretty much, um, I'd say 85% of the world outside of South America. And so, um, I would say a place that I've dreamt of being that I could, you know, put my roots down in. Uh, I've thought that many times about, uh, I'd say Switzerland. Mm. Um, I love Zurich. Zurich is multicultural, cultural, it's beautiful. Um, My experience with the people where we were there, where it was really nice, like it was good. Everyone was really nice. So uh, Zurich is an amazing city. And so I would say that's been on my mind um, in the past about putting down roots, uh, along with Australia and Maui. Any other place? Um, No other place really yet. Um, Not even Germany? I don't know why, but not like maybe Germany or I don't know. Like, I think the Germans would love you. Yeah, I've been, when we go on tour with Chippendales, uh, it's a three month tour. And so for the first month and a half, we're traveling to many countries within Europe. And then the last month, because we're so popular in Germany, we stay a month and a half in Germany doing shows all over Germany. I've experienced Germany very thoroughly. Um, 
And there's some beautiful places in Germany, like absolutely amazingly beautiful. Uh, one place I've been that was on my mind uh, is Friedrichshafen. And that city uh, is during the Christmas season that we uh, have our tour there in Germany. And so they have the little Christmas markets out. And I remember walking around that city and just thinking like, ah, oh, this place is amazing. And it just left an, such a huge impression on me. Um, and I always think about it. Um, Frankfurt's a big city in Germany. I think Frankfurt's awesome. Um, Munich or München is a great city as well. Uh, yeah, I'm totally up for doing stuff in Germany if, if, uh, if the work takes me there as well. Okay. We're going to have a little fun now. <clears throat> I don't ever pre-plan this. Let's get it started. We're going to do some Q and A. <clears throat> All right. All right. I, I was recently interviewed on the show. Um, how did you, and, uh, they do a spin of the wheel uh, and it's it's really amazing of what the answers could be and such. But with this one, I have uh, not named it yet. I've done this once before, but with you, I definitely would like to do this. So I'm going to call this segment with you. Uh, what are we going to? What am I going to call this? Um, this Q and A. We're going to call it uh, getting down with Sean. Uh, what would be the, um, what would be uh, improvisation? I love it. I, I love like, not <laughs> having everything perfect and scripted out because I do not script my shows. So um, I find it- It a keeps lot, it real. It keeps it real and it's a lot more fun. Do I enjoy all the pausing or the waiting? No, but for what it's worth, why not? You know, for those creative directors out there, they should love it. So- <laughs> Yes, they should. Uh, uh, the reality of Sean and what would he do? That's the name of this Sean. What All would right. Sean do? Okay. If we are at a barbecue, would you be cooking, make cooking me something to eat, making me a cocktail or picking up the trash around that people are leaving because they're fucking lazy? I would say I would be cooking. My dad uh, was a chef. Um, and so I grew up in the kitchen watching him cook and that's just been in my life, my entire life. And so, yeah, just seeing him cook, I would imagine myself in the same position grilling. I love grilling. And so I'll be grilling up something, probably smoking a cigar while I'm doing it, just enjoying life. <laughs> All right. What would he do? Second question. If you had the opportunity to live with someone or something would you pick a girlfriend a, a, a pet or a relative if you could live with someone who would it be a, 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 a girlfriend a pet or a family member all right if i could live with anyone who would it be i would take the first option a girlfriend uh nothing can replace a girlfriend i'm all about love i was on a dating show recently to find love and so that's something that's important to me and that's what i would choose so then the pet would come later hopefully before the kids and then unless there's a, a real emergency maybe the relative yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, third question. What would he do? Um, would you, w when you have a housekeeper, would you let the housekeeper uh, wash your clothes and fold them? Would you rather the housekeeper just clean the house and leave your clothes alone? Or would you have your housekeeper cook, do your clothes, and take care of everything for you what what would be the best management in your life huh i would like the housekeeper to do the dishes cleaning the dishes that's something i hate doing i still do it but i don't like doing it and um i would take care of the rest because um i think 
being able to continue no matter how successful you become i think doing something uh seem as seemingly small as like chores around the house like uh you know, cleaning the room or cleaning a living room or kitchen or whatever, or, you know, like, I think that having those things in my life, uh, it keeps me, it keeps me motivated in a sense. I like to watch, uh, Rick Ross's, um, Instagram stories because he's so grateful to have the, the land that he has around his house that he continues to mow his own lawn. He has acres and acres and acres of land surrounding his house and he cuts it himself. Um, he has a John Deere tractor and he fires it up, goes out there, drives around and cuts his own grass. And he's telling everyone why he continues to cut his own grass. And it's one to show gratitude for the blessing that he has, which is his house, his home. And two, it keeps him motivated. It, it keeps the, the hustle inside of him alive. And so I would uh, choose the first option for, um, you know, just the housekeeper cleaning the dishes. I'll do everything else. I think that keeps um, me motivated, but I just don't like doing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute, you do, don't you have a dishwasher? I do, I do, but I grew up, my mom, she, taught me to hand wash dishes uh, and so i fill up the sink with soapy water i scrub the heck out of my dishes <laughs> I, and then i'm the crazy one to throw them in the dishwasher after i've washed them <laughs> but you know what you're doing it the right way you're actually not supposed to put dirty dishes in a dishwasher and most people do not know that you're uh -huh. supposed to rinse them off and clean them. Yeah, you're you're really not like when you see those commercials, the cascade and stuff, and everything's ground on. Uh -huh. You're actually supposed to be getting rid of that. Huh. All right. Good to know. I'm doing it right by accident. <laughs> you, you really are doing it right by accident. And another tip, and this was uh, and this was taught to me, is to stick your utensils upright. So don't put your forks or knives or spoons down first, like in that little bin. The only reason why is if you're using something like jet dry or anything, when uh -huh. it rinses down, that residue will go and could stay on uh -huh. the, the uh -huh. spoon, the fork. So stick the stick it upright. All right. So I when it rinses, it won't know stick. that. That's a good note. Yep. Um, cause you, cause you never know what sort of, you don't want to, you know, inadvertently put a fork or spoon or use a knife just in case, and maybe be having a, a toxic cleaner residue on there that you cannot see. All right. That's good to know. Thank you for that. If you were to be in a movie, now we know traditionally you would be perfect in a love story movie, but we're not going there. What would you do if you, what movie opposite of what normally you would be in, Sean, if you could be in any type of genre, if it was horror, sci-fi, or um, horror, sci-fi, or a Western, what one would you be in and why? I would say Western. Uh, for one, I'm from Texas, and so that's just right up my alley. Um, in regard to something opposite of, of me, uh, everyone looks at me and calls me the nice guy. Oh, Sean's so sweet, he's nice. You know, they go down that path of compliments which is great. And I thank people for saying that, acknowledging that, but um, I would want to play the bad guy in a Western film. I think that'd be amazing. So I just finished watching The Harder They Fall by uh, James Samuels. And the that movie is it's just, it's amazing. I love the movie. And the character that Idris Elba plays, I would want to be that character. He's this, uh, he's this, Evil doer with a good cause. He's doing something good, but he's he's going about getting it in the wrong way. You know, he's doing evil stuff to get to his goal, but he's a villain in the film and I love that character. I would always want to play a villain, so I would choose that a western. Okay. Two more questions. What would you do if you were an ice cream flavor? What one would you be and why? 
Oh, I'm gonna go with the. You're, you might not. You might already know this answer. I will go chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not me, the that, safest answer, is it? <laughs> I don't know. It might be, but <laughs> it just feels right saying it. it feels right. But tell um, us why. Chocolate, because it matches my skin tone for one. <laughs> um, it's my favorite uh, sweet to eat. Uh -huh. um, I I make um, raw vegan chocolate. Wow. Homemade raw vegan chocolate. And so that's just like, I love chocolate. I don't eat candy like I did when I was a kid. Um, I don't really eat sweets these days. The only sweets I really get is from like uh, fruit, like berries when I'm eating like blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries. Um, or when I make chocolate, I eat chocolate. And so that's like pretty much the only like sweet I eat outside of fruit. When I get back to Vegas, no lie, and I know you didn't offer, but I'm going to hold you to it because that's just who I am because you brought it up. And I figure we're, we're, we're turning that good or becoming that good of friends. Uh, I would like you to introduce me to your vegan chocolate. I will definitely. I'll glad you, gladly make you some chocolate for sure. I promise you I'll make you some when I see you. I trust you and I believe you, honestly. Um, last question. What would you do? If you were in an animal shelter and you had the opportunity to be given a loving, safe, healthy home, would you be a dog, a cat, or a rabbit, and why? I'm gonna go with a dog because I love dogs. For one, I have two, and one of the things that's top of mind right now for me about dogs is that their their love is unconditional. They're so sweet and so innocent and so teachable. And I just love everything about a dog's energy. And I went so long living here in Vegas without having, an, uh, having a pet. I wanted a pet, but I just didn't buy one because I was so busy. And so I um, eventually got two pups, two, uh, two applehead chihuahuas, and I love them to death. I like, always want to be around them. I always want to, I love waking up to them and seeing them run around and like having the responsibility of taking care of them. A dog is what I would be. And their names? Oh, Wendy and Herman. W Wendy and Herman. Yes. All right. Well, big shout out to Wendy and Herman to... Uh, very um, lucky chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, um, I don't think that there is another question. You you handled those very well. And I like your answers, especially the Western. I was kind of rooting to see if you would pick maybe sci-fi because I'm really a sci-fi um, fanatic. But uh, yeah. I, I really, Western works. I can right. really, 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 really see that. Yeah, I, I love sci-fi too. Um, I love that type of adventure uh, type film. And when I heard about Elon Musk potentially flying people to Mars and us like living there, I was in. Like, I love that kind of stuff. And so uh, I would, I definitely tap into sci-fi if that opportunity came to. Sean, I want to thank you for being with us today. We have performer, actor, and model, star of Chippendales in Las Vegas and touring around the world. Uh, he is best known for his stint with Cirque du Soleil. Uh, he was recently on the HBO Max reality TV show F-Boy Island Season 1. Sean Williams, let everyone know where would be the best place to go to connect with you. Is it TikTok? Is it Instagram? Where is it? Um, the best place to connect with me is on Instagram uh, through social media. Um, I'm always checking my DMs. And so uh, there's that. Um, I don't really um, do much uh, correspondence on Facebook. I'd say Instagram is the primary um, place to um, talk to me. 
Okay. You don't have a TikTok yet. I do have a TikTok, but I'm not on there. <laughs> I don't um I don't go on there and use it really. Uh yeah. <laughs> you know it's the hottest app right now, right? Yeah, I, I do, and I see that Instagram's adopting a a lot of stuff from from uh TikTok when the reels came to be and mm -hmm. um yeah. But yeah, I need to get on there. I need to uh, start utilizing that that platform. Their uh, magic mic, or you know, there's a quite a few uh, male dancing pages that is on there. I'm I'm sure Chippendales is probably on TikTok. You know, everyone we all know. Here's the, the reality of it: is someone who looks like you, whether you have clothes on or not, you're a great looking man. But we all know sexy and sex and everything sells. Even with you shirtless, you will blow up on there because honestly, you know, it's the only reason why I haven't blown up because I am not showing anything. But then again, if I had chest and muscles like you and probably a good thing that um, I keep myself in check because I'm wondering how much into myself i would be if i started to <laughs> obtain clout to be half naked online now once again <laughs> you're classy you can get away with it but i am a public relations rep i will admit i am going to be doing a photo shoot in december i will be doing a shirtless awesome. photo shoot hey i've been awesome. working very hard behind the scenes and you know why I'm doing it and I want to share this with you, Sean, is mm -hmm. because I am 47 years old and I deal and work with a lot of people when it comes to mental health. And uh -huh. with that, um, I do counsel and uh, listen and offer, you know, as someone who is a former grief counselor, um, I, you know, public relations is still it's, it's therapy it's being a therapist it's being strategic mm -hmm. in helping someone with their emotional mental and physical um you know self and identity uh behind the scenes and in front of the camera so with that being said i thought to myself why not do something like that i'm going to contact several of my media friends and what i would like to do and we all know i, I don't know if you've been reading in the news especially lately of what social media is doing to young kids it's been recently reported that young girls are starting to have seizures they're starting to have ticks uh oh. what it's doing with to men with with the length of time that they're on and when when it comes to self-identity so i hope as someone who is 47 years old a legal representative but for me to go shirtless the whole story is is that i'm doing this with just taking probiotics eating eating right eating healthy multivitamins no creatine no protein powders i'm not do, taking anything from anything from any health food store just your basic stuff no stimulants I do every day though. I like my decaf coffee. I was regular, but can't anymore. It was tearing up my stomach. I was a cold brew. I love Starbucks cold brew, but way too Same. acidic. Oh, you too. I love cold brews. They're oh, amazing. Very, very acidic though. Um, I see. But, or at least for me. So my doctor said, no, if you're going to do anything, go to decaf. Um, but yeah, that's my whole goal. So I've been working very diligently, hitting the sauna, doing cardio, and I am really, really proud. Now, would I be like uh, probably never wearing clothes again if I had your physique? Yeah, I'd never be wearing clothes again. <laughs> but I'll tell <laughs> And I would be posing in online because I'm going to tell you to look the way that you look, Sean, even with clothes on, to look the way that you look. I would think it would be very fun to have the appearance that you have. Don't you think? Yeah. I, yeah. I think it is fun to have confidence of body, but I, I put a lot more attention on, um, uh, the qualities inside are like character, morals and values. And those things matter. And then everything else is secondary, but, given my occupation um as a dancer as an entertainer um as a performer for cirque when i perform with them like i performed in sexy shows and my job is to um hold a standard with my body that 
you know, when people come to see a show like that, it's something that they don't see on a daily basis. That's what they come and pay the money to come see the show. So um, I have to maintain this physique. And outside of doing it for work, I do it for myself. I do it for health. Um, uh, health is a it's a thing that is in, extremely important to me. And um, I like to feel good. I don't want to be running up and down the stairs and complaining about my back or my knees and all these things, you know, like I'm going to do the daily task when it comes to nutrition and training to um, uphold a standard for how I feel and how I look. Um, I'm going to do that on a daily basis. And so I think what you're doing is very noble. It's a noble task. And I think it's going to inspire a lot of people. Just me hearing about it right now, I'm inspired. So good on you. This is amazing. Thank you. I, and I'm going to be transparent. I was talking to the photographer and I was like, I really like my body hair. Like I know most people shave. I was like thinking to myself, how strategic am I going to be? Is keeping the body hair because we can go on social media and we will see hairless guys all over the place. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm thinking, and he told me, he said, well, if you keep the hair, you know, I mean, he said, you got to look at this, Steven. People who shave, it's all about what is it that you want to show? Do you want to show a lot of definition? Do you want to show, you know, those lines and everything else that we see when someone is hairless or do you just want to make it more art artistic artistic in a way to where you have the hair but it's gonna not be so much of a you know potentially a muscular shoot it's just gonna have a different uh -huh. different view so i have decided i'm going to shave so yeah it's it's gonna be so you're gonna it's gonna help showcase the muscle a lot better um that's why most bodybuilders and models shave is to uh showcase the muscle showcase the lines a lot better and so i think that's i think it's good all right here here's the thing i'm gonna step out of my comfort zone i am used to having secrets but with you sean i'm going to this is because of you and i'm doing a live drop on this and i'm just gonna say fuck it all right, so I am going to be doing a press media shoot with my friend. I've known him for years from when I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm going to break out of my comfort zone because I normally mm -hmm. don't like people to know my personal business. So I'm going to be very transparent because I, I want to have this honesty with you. We are doing uh -huh. a press media photo shoot, but I am doing also for the first time in my life, in order for me to really do this and to really understand to have the experience of what someone like you, Sean, you're, you're a different caliber. You're not like a lot of other people, but someone who works hard on her body and really puts emotional, mental, and physical health as an importance for yourself first. Like you said, you have an image to keep up with, but you're doing this for you. I am i don't know if anyone's gonna see this. I told my friend if he wants to do an art installation, he wants to add it into a book, but I'm going to say, fuck it. I don't care what people's opinions are because anybody who knows me for 29 years, for what I've done in the industry and for other people, I've always kept it classy and sophisticated, but I cannot and will not understand someone like you and, and professionals like yourself, Sean, who have the body that you have. I need to dive fully in to find out who I am and how I feel as a man. And for what mm -hmm. I've worked hard for, I am doing a nude photo shoot. Nude. Nude photo shoot. So yes, I will have pants on and I am going to have my <laughs> top off, but I am doing a nude photo shoot. I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for clout. I don't know if anybody will ever see these pictures. I am working with one of the top most respected photographers in the industry. I'm not going to have to worry about any pedophile predator shit, nothing going on. It's going to be completely professional, exclusive at an undisclosed location. But in order for me to really find out about me and my comfortability in my body, Yes, I am taking it that far, Sean, and I am doing a nude photo shoot. So yes, my dick is gonna be getting photographed, my ass is getting photographed, my balls are getting photographed, everything's getting photographed. I am not gonna oh. be everything <laughs> in a photo. He's gonna be doing like art little areas. 
you know. All right. Do, do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's, so it's going to be like uh, artistic uh, nudes. It's going to be artistic nudes, but not traditional. Like there, you may get he, a side profile of my glutes and my leg. You won't see the dick, but you'll get the side profile of my ass. You know, maybe All right. it'll be little little things here and there, but it's not going to be uh, you know distastefully pornish. Yeah, well, I think that's great. I think. Um, with the right, right photographer like uh, you're shooting with, I think the pictures are going to come out amazing. And above all, like you said, you're doing it for yourself. And uh, I think that's the most important thing. And uh, um, yeah, like I think you're going to get to know so much more about yourself and your mindset when diving into this type of um, artistry. Um, yeah, like you're, you're gonna think a lot. <laughs> I think a lot when I'm doing my photo shoots, even when I have my just my shirt off and I'm doing a shot in like swim trunks or or boxer briefs or um, just jeans or whatever. I I'm conscious about everything that um, that I'm doing during the shoot, just uh, where my mind is and how I'm posing and um, just wanting to showcase my best uh, best appearance or. or, or or best self in the photo shoot. And so, uh, yeah, with your goal of learning more about yourself and how it feels to be in front of the camera in such a way, I think you're going to learn a lot. And I think it's cool. And I think you're going to inspire a lot of people or those that know you. Um, you might inspire people that you don't know. They're going to see it and be like, wow, like they might take the initiative to, you know, start working on their health and working on their bodies and then, Maybe one day get in front of the camera and um, do something that they're proud of to get memories of where they took their body. Um, I think that's important, too. I, and I appreciate that. And and for those that know the intentions and thank you, Sean. And seriously, you helped bring that out in me. I was not going to tell anybody. I just felt when I get to a certain place and I feel something come from my chest, from from my heart area, my mm -hmm. heart center. Should I go there? And when I get that pull forward to do it and it just came to my mind, like, should I drop this, um, this secret and, and should I share it? And like I said, I wasn't going to say shit to anybody, but you just, you, you inspire me and, and encourage and pulled something within me to say, yes, yeah, Steven, come out in the open, come out with it live and do it. Um, no bullshit. I don't BS. Like I had no intentions to do that, but obviously God, the universe up above has got something in store for me. And I don't know where this messaging is going to go or the message. Once these photos get done, where maybe I just may decide to find someone or a publication or something who would be tasteful and responsible i have no intentions of these to be turning into some homo erotic you know porn shit nothing like that like this is for me i have seen over and over and over again men and women online naked half naked and i have no judgment on what they're doing and what they're doing it for I'm mm -hmm. doing this to check in with my own emotional mental self and from the people that I speak with in the industry and to share another tidbit. And I recently dropped this or share this. I helped four people get out of the porn industry. They were so scared. Hey. Yeah, get this, Sean. The number one common uh, denominator that I've learned with when someone is in porn is they are absolutely scared and they believe they could never be in a normal life a normal lifestyle or in the mainstream world once they go there so i had four people who came to me i counseled them i sat down with them as a public relations rep i listened and i asked questions and that was what really inspired me to think of what can I do in balance? What can I do in sharing a story? What can I do to say to somebody, it is not about being sexual or sexy or seductive or pornish or prostitutionist. What does it mean to be in your body? What is it and how do you see? Because scientifically we know 
what we see in our in the mirror of ourselves, Sean, and what we see in our mind's eye is completely different. And mm -hmm. this is going to be a way for me after 47 years, this is going to be a way for me to find out is what I see in my mind the same of what I see in the mirror? And what does that mean to me? emotionally and mentally and then with understanding and having that experience is how my narrative how my story is going to translate however i may or may not come out publicly about this but i'm doing this for my own self because i haven't always felt comfortable in my body i have envied men like you of wondering okay i did the creatine stuff i did the you know the caffeine stuff i did the protein i've taken spent hundreds of dollars on these and i don't have the size i've had personal trainers many personal trainers and it just comes down to i realize it's my genetics so i had went through a, a area of my life, Sean, to where I may not ever get to your size. And I've also learned, um, because when I was putting on the weight, putting on the muscles, my cholesterol went up. And so when I was mm -hmm. talking to my doctor, it is best that my weight is lower and my body fat mass is lower than higher because it was getting to a point to when I was, uh, 183 pounds. I'm 140, 141 right now. I'm five, five, seven and a half. But I All was right. at 183. I liked the way my body looked. I wasn't ripped like you, but I did like it. But my cholesterol was fucking like over 200 and something. And my doctor yeah. got concerned. She didn't know was it hereditary? Is it, you know, is it nutrition? So we figure it out when I was changing things up and bringing my weight down and changing certain foods and getting off those supplements, um, my cholesterol is normal. Wow, that's good. That's great. And we've realized that as long as I stay between a 140, 145 weight range and to to regulate the, the body mass, uh -huh. I don't have any issues. Well, that's good. And I, I think um, going through that was a necessity. It was necessary for you to go through that to find out this information so you can approach it the right way. Because uh, we're all so different. Like, um, there are those that I admire and they have a certain quality of muscle mass or shape that I won't have because of my genetics. And so I know that I have muscles, you know, like, and I'm going to showcase my muscles the best way that I can. I'm going to showcase my body, not just my muscles, but my body. Um, and I'm going to work on it to, I'm going to showcase it the best I can. I'm going to work on it to be its best at all times. And so um, I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, even if you don't come out with these things publicly or, or like post your photos publicly, like this information of uh, people hearing it on this um, interview right now, during this discussion, they might be inspired by it, or you're going to have the opportunity to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, you know, those that you meet and have this impactful story to tell them and might inspire them during that conversation too. And so I think it's great. And um, yeah, shameless plug right now. Um, I have a whispers program that I created last year with this uh, big film director in LA last year. Uh, his name's Jensen. And uh, I created a 10 part program where I dive into the ins and outs of my uh, type of training that I do daily. I still do this, you know, this is what I do. And so I have that there to help people that are wanting to change their physiques. Um, those that want to have a better quality of um, body and how they feel. And um, yeah, it's uh, something I'm proud of. It's something that, when I pass, this is a part of my legacy. It's going to be something here that people can see that I, I've done that, um, you know, that's going to just help the world. And so uh, that's what you're doing right now. You, this is legacy for you. This is uh, something that when you're gone, this is going to be here for people to see and be inspired by, especially those that know you. Now, with the tips and, and what you just shared, Sean, is that do you need to be in person? Are you doing this online? What's the detail? Oh, so it's uh, it's all online. It's 
through an app called Wispin. So all of these workouts were pre-recorded and they're just on the Wispin's uh, platform for people to just go on and and work out and train whenever they want. They can do it at home. They can do it at the gym. Um, it's minimal equipment. All you need is a yoga mat and a couple pairs of dumbbells. And yeah, I take you through my style of training. Like uh, there's an aspect of weight training, whether it's calisthenics or using the dumbbells for uh, added weight. And there's cardiovascular movements that we do throughout the workouts. We do abs, we do uh, stretching. I just try to make it this uh, total package type of workout that people can do to work out every part of their body from their back to their arms, their chest, abs, legs. Um, yeah, work on their heart because there are cardiovascular movements in the workout and um, work on their flexibility, you know, opening up, becoming more mobile. Um, these are important aspects of training that I focus on. And it's what's keep me in shape throughout my uh, now long career in entertainment. And uh, yes, yeah, an indispensable part of my life. Spell that, <clears throat> spell that app out for us. Wispence, W-I-S-P-E-N-C-E, Wispence. Wispence app. W I S P E N C E. Yes. Okay. And it, do you need to do an in? Uh, what do they call that? The online purchase? Or is this a purchase? Is this? A, what do you need to do? Yes, it's uh, through the platform. You go online, and um, all the um, payment information is done within the app. And so I have a link to it in my link tree on my Instagram. I also have a link to it from my Facebook page. And yeah, you just click on that and it takes you directly to the website and to the app. Now, is this a one-time purchase? Is it a monthly subscription? What do you, what is it? You could do either. Um, you can pay for a, a year or more, or you can do it month by month. That's awesome. Seriously. Now look at that. I didn't even, you know what? We were heading out and we didn't even get on this topic, but you see how my testimony led into your testimony now can go and help people with wispins. Yes. I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, Every what's that? Oh, go ahead. No, no, we are officially going to be closing out unless you have <laughs> anything else. Uh, we got the wispins, check out the wispins app. Uh, you know, Sean Williams, performer, actor, uh, you know, inspiration. Um, any other drops, any up, upcoming projects at all, Sean? Um, not that I can think of at the moment. Um, we just shot our 2022 calendar for Chippendales. Uh, that's the most recent thing I did. There are some things in the works that I can't really speak about, but uh, yeah, I'm always doing something. When the time comes for me to be able to talk about those things i'll definitely open up and let the world know i'll let you know too steven well i told you once you are interviewed here live on air with stephen quilk on power 98.5 this is your home so you're more than welcome to come on anytime drop promote self-promote whatever it is i'm your ally thank you thank you i really appreciate that hold the line sean i want to thank Everyone for tuning in today live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. What a great and tremendous opportunity I have had to interview performer, actor, and model Sean Williams. Uh, you best know him by Cirque du Soleil. He is a professional dancer with Chippendales. You can tune in tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time to catch up on this interview share it tune in on the power 98.5 satellite radio app you can listen to it on alexa live radio fm odyssey.com formerly known as radio.com stream Itter, streamer um, and a host of other platforms and another one of my favorite my tuner and we've got a lot more coming so we are have a reach of 200 countries and counting. The support has been overwhelming. I want to thank my good friend, Dan Aykroyd for his endorsement 
for even Sean Williams to be here today. His endorsement of what he's doing when it comes to uh, perfect health, perfect wealth, uh, being a really, really great advocate for what it means to be physically fit, uh, to be a professional dancer, and most of all, to be true to who you really are. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Have a great day. Holiday season coming up. Uh, Thanksgiving is this coming week. Make the best of it because you never know when the next one's going to be your last. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.